I'm happy to be able to talk to these two persons who have contributed a lot to this Co cooperation and they are, I would say, the driving forces behind this collaboration. So uh, in my next interview, in this uh, video interview, there will be Roland Zelles. He is Vice President Global Territory Sales at Autodesk and uh, Jürgen Schomakers, Managing Partner Germany and Switzerland at ESRI Deutschland. So, um, they are with me right now and um, first of all, hello and how are you doing? Um, I mean, we are in a very special time, we meet digital. Um, is there a kind of new normal in your everyday life or how do you manage to keep business running in these times of the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, it's a quite, quite an interesting and challenging year, the year 2020. So I think we, we started, uh, we, we had our own conference in, in, in March this year, and uh, well, we had two in, in March, and maybe there were the last ones uh, which were really physical. And after that, uh, yeah, we, we more or less shut down the company uh, in terms of uh, getting completely virtual. So currently we're still in a virtual mode, so uh, we decided we do everything virtual. We are trying to avoid physical meetings. Um, Today, I'm looking on my dashboard, today we have uh, around one third of the people in the office and two thirds are in the home office. Uh, myself, it's quite quite normal at the moment, so I'm spending more or less 70% of my time in, in the home office uh, using video conferencing, trying to get to keep in touch with our people and with the customers. Business-wise, it's uh, interesting, it's, it's quite okay, so uh, there's not a big big uh, decline in business, uh, so we are quite doing quite well. Uh, but of course, we have to learn to get more digital in total. So that means uh, uh, working together, cooperating digital together internally, but also with our customers. Uh, and all, overall, it's quite a big boost for digitalization of our company at the moment. I'm alive and healthy, so and all my colleagues are doing well, um, so thanks asking um, we we reacted quite fast and I think our main concern was our customers so when we started I think we made our cloud products available for our customers and also let them use the products free of charge at the very beginning just to get adopted and keep the business running on the digitalization and we were in an interesting phase because we um, we transformed our whole company to a subscription-based company and a lot of our customers already were working with the cloud licensing in a cloud licensing or subscription model and in that environment it doesn't matter where you where you physically located so these customers could work all the kind of customers and the older models we helped to move kind of to the new world like the kind of digitalization boost everybody's experiencing um, business went on, I think we, we saw kind of the lockdowns of the countries and we see kind of the lockdown and the opening of the countries and business was following. Um, we had two good quarters so far as a company. So I think we, you know, we're growing double digit, um, nothing to be concerned, I think for customers, partners and our employees. Maybe one interesting learning. Um, and I guess a lot of us have the same thing. When you're in your company and you have this test of a fire alarm, I guess very often you're like, uh, wrong time, I'm not interested, why we do that? I completely changed my opinion about these things because like our back office, they, once a quarter, they were always doing this kind of tests. What happens if there's a big fire in San Francisco? Complete uh, outage of energy in Europe. And how can we work offline at home? And they did test it every quarter. So when the pandemic happened, for them it was like it was like one of these tests, and they could just go within minutes. Um, when I saw that, next time there's a fire alarm test, I definitely will pack my stuff and leave the building and follow the instructions. And I think this is something I think we probably is an interesting learning, and there's a good reason why you do these tests, and also there's a good reason why when we fly, the pilot talks us through the security measures. It's important and I think it's something to take serious. Thank you very much for these insights about your new everyday life. And Energy 2020 has taken also a new way. Um, we are digital, we cannot meet physical. So what is your impression? 
it's the first time so it's always good to do something the first time and being at a premiere of something so i think this uh, uh, an interesting environment secondly it's not so uncommon for myself because i'm traveling 240 250 days a year um, running a global team so regardless of where i'm current i'm located in my normal uh, world and work pattern two-thirds to three-quarters of the team is virtual and i run most of the meetings like that so it's nothing very uncommon what's missing is the real connection to the real life and i feel that and i, I think this becomes the more painful part for me is not touching people but sitting down having a deep conversation going to the whiteboard going through all the details that's all the kind of reality checks which are falling down and missing but other than that i think it's you know it's possible to continue and work yeah as roland mentioned i think i think it's the same experience here we many things are done the first time now uh, not only for us uh, compared, we are compared to the same stage, so we are doing a lot of things we did already before COVID, very virtual, and we're working very digital, but also for our customers. And uh, I think it's uh, on the one side a, a good experience because you can maybe take take more out of a, of a virtual event. On the other side, I think what we are all missing is is a physical and, and human interaction, and uh, this is valid for our people internally, but it's also valid uh, in, in discussions with customers. So um, my my personal take after six months or seven months COVID now is um, from the efficiency to to learn and to to get get insights into special technology uh, trends and things like that. It's it's very good. So it's maybe even more efficient than in the physical world. Uh, but what we are totally missing is interaction with people and the human factor. And this is something which uh, concerns me and. Uh, Honestly, makes me a little bit nervous because uh, it's something. What, what I like, I like to interact with people, and that's I'm missing that. So I totally agree. Um, I mean, I miss meeting people or gatherings, but I see we are so many people here on this digital platform, and this really feels good being digitally connected. So let's have a look at your partnership. Autodesk and Esri are joining forces to put GIS and BIM data at the center of projects. So why are you partnering? So let me go back to the beginning of the whole idea, uh, which is how can we create value for our customers? And as Autodesk is very strong in the whole building information area, ESRI is very strong on the kind of position of where and no building no street no rail is built in space it's built on some place so working together and let the data flow is an obvious good thing so Jack Benjamin and Andrew Anagnas our uh, CEO came up with this technical partnership of letting the data flow as this is great and we had the first products all av available then um, we started to to join forces and work together on a local level. So Jürgen and I met at that time still in a coffee in Munich and agreed, okay, how can we do that? So reaching out to customers, get customers verifying what we our thinking is of the real value created at the customer and building a kind of a project roadmap on how we can work together. So, and we are in the middle of that and that's also the reason why we meet together here. And I think Jürgen can definitely um, tell a little bit more on the continuation of the story and where we are now. The good old times when we are still at physical meetings. I, I, <laughs> I remember that. It was the beginning of the year. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit the story of uh, something is growing together which, has to, which, which is fitting together. As, as Ronald mentioned, so every building is somewhere in space and, and uh, Autodesk is world class in, in, in building and construction uh, and business information modeling, and, and Esri is world class in, in asking, doing the science of where and uh, uh, answering the questions where is happening what. And uh, I, I would add so, we, especially our customers, our customers. Uh, who are sometimes or in, in, in many areas are already joint customers. On the one side, the construction people, on the other side, the, let me say, the, the GIS people. And, and they had some borders between the systems, but, but the users of the systems are always uh, asking, okay, on the one side, I would like to 
scale up or scale down uh, from a building to, to 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 the region, from the region to the city, from the city to the state, and 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 back from the from state to region to city to building, and so everything in every is 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 somewhere in a spatial context. And, and therefore, what uh, what our target, of course, is that we can build together uh, not only a, a digital twin of of building, but also a, a digital twin of, of 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 the surrounding landscape, so that you have really a complete picture. And I think this is a, it's a, as Roland mentioned, we are we are discussing this with customers. Uh, we are discussing the value behind this with customers, and and the feedback we are getting is is tremendous. So because um, this is. Uh, so we we, are, we have broken down some borders which were only artificial. The reason we are also showing up here together is to give our customers the confidence this is not only a web page or a marketing event, it's also real people working together and make sure this is working and they have the confidence when they go down this road, there are physical people they can ask and definitely will help to fix the problems if something occurs or will definitely be available to create really the, the benefit of our vision. Um, let's look at topics like climate change, population growth or mass urbanization. So how do then BIM and GIS working together to address these global challenges? Yeah, maybe maybe I, I can start on that. So, yeah, I think we are we are in a quite challenging, living in a quite challenging world. It's not only the the, the wave of COVID. It's uh, we are talking about climate change. We are talking about biodiversity, all really really global global challenges uh, or mass urbanization um, and growing populations. And there are quite real problems we are working on. And, and from our point of view, and I think from a joint point of view, Autodesk and Esri, we we have the the technology which can give some answers to, to, to questions which, which have to be solved in that context. Um, looking, for example, um, climate change, uh, if you're talking, if we are talking about the, 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 um, the, the changes you have in the landscape, if you're talking about the changes you have to make in, in building and constructions, and if you can put it in the same context, you're getting, you're getting more integrated answers to, 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 to work on, on, on really problem-solving uh, approaches in, in that way. I am passionate about the partnership for multiple reasons. And I think it's kind of, there's technical reasons, but there's also everything going on. And I wanna, I wanna use the Autodesk vision, which is like we help people imagine, design and make a better world. It's technically on what we do, but it's also philanthropic of what we believe in. Um, and. Building on what Jürgen just said is, if you think about the climate change and just on the building industry, on 50% um, of the CO2 emissions are coming from buildings. In making sure that buildings are more designed and made like a product. And that's the whole idea behind the building information modeling. We can actually reduce the carbon footprint of every single building. Um, Prefabrication, which is the, the convergence of manufacturing technology with BIM, will help even more on doing that. Um, so that's that's one area where I think I see we have a big contribution. Um, the second one is, and I am really passionate about the idea of the green, new Green Deal in Europe, uh, which is not yet done. Um, they have this idea of right to repair. Similar to the uh, GDP, uh, the, the, the privacy laws in Europe, right to be forgotten. Similar idea, right to be re to repair. That means it forces products, buildings, to constantly have go into a renovation retrofit project, and you kind of reuse it, which also will create a lot of innovation, reducing waste at the beginning, making sure there's no waste on the way. Can you recycle everything? You have to manage the whole life cycle, and doing that in a spatial context is extremely important because it's not the one single building you want to measure. If you think about a, a city or a rail or street project, you have to do it in a bigger landscape and a scale and really measure the impact and also do the improvements of that. Because long term, we can only do that if we do it with simulation analysis and then have a constant improvement on, on the planning and the construction side.
So that's why I think there is immediate benefit for the customers, and we have several great customers who work on that. I think there's examples on the German rail, there's examples on Swiss rail, Ital Fair, so it's in the rail industry. We have construction companies doing that. And the bigger vision longer term will be what's under the term of smart city. I think it's kind of a little bit fluffy at the moment, but what I just described on buildings and multiple buildings in the space, I think that's where I think the partnership of Israel and Autodesk will definitely make a better world. Uh, maybe I can add two words on that, and I'm, I'm sharing the passion about about uh, the, the, the new Green Deal. Uh, and, and imagine, Roland just mentioned about uh, energy efficiency in, in the building and construction, but if you go go down the road a little bit further, you you're, you have a planning phase. So where I am building my, my new houses, where well, how is a more energy efficiency uh, um, uh, traffic space and streets around that. Uh, where is the where the 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 energy supply? Where can I use uh, solar energy? Where can I use wind energies? All these are questions which are belonging together to have a complete picture, to let me say a more climate and climate friendly approach to, for example, smart cities. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I would really underline that uh, the, the the joint forces between Autodesk and Esri's are definitely. Uh, providing solutions and answers to very, very urgent questions we have at the moment. Thank you for these insights into the future with BIM and GIS. So um, what do you think about, uh, what is your prediction about the new normal? So the future of events, they are going fully digital or hybrid or yeah, just let us know here something more about your prediction about Intergeo, for example. There will be a, a renaissance of exhibitions uh, because people will miss so much the human interaction. But I also convinced the digital platform will continue. So it will be a hybrid model going forward long term, which I think it also helps on the climate change. If you think about you can reduce travel and you need to find the right balance between where you need and want it and where I uh, think you can use a digital interaction. Um, for me, the geo means a lot. I think I'm a surveying engineer. I'm a regular participant on the Intergeo for since 1984. Um, and sometimes when my colleagues ask, okay, what is Intergeo or you know the formerly known Geodatentag, I also mentioned this is 175 years ago. Uh, this was started, this idea. This is at the time when, you know, in Dodge City, um, cowboys were shooting each other. We were talking about um, uh, geodesy and how to manage land. So I think it's a long history. It's, there's a, I have a lot of personal connection to this. So that's why I think it's important that it continues. For the customers and the users, I think there's a big, big benefit. Because what we just talked about, I think companies have good ideas. I think people know each other and create new synergies. Yes, you can learn them on in the internet, you can publish that, but I think actually meeting people, talking about your own problem and how you can apply these solutions only happens in a, in a platform. You need a platform. And I think an exhibition is a great platform where you can bring people together from different disciplines, different companies, and really creating synergies, which definitely will help to improve society, environment, and also technology. Yeah, maybe I can I can add on that. So I'm also one of the old uh, already GeoDatentag users and, and visitors. So I uh, I'm, I'm also in this business uh, since I don't know more or less 30 years, uh, or maybe even longer. Um, and and from my background, I'm not a surveyor, but I'm, I'm a geographer. And geographers are really people who believe in synergies between disciplines. So geographers know about a lot about everything, but deep knowledge about nothing. So <laughs> that's maybe may the difference. And, and for us, uh, and for me personally, of course, Intergeo was always a place to, to meet people from different disciplines. And, um, and I, I would totally agree with Roland. Uh, the, our view on, on the change after COVID will be that, of course, the digital forms will, will stay. They will stay definitely. Uh, there are so many synergies. You can work so much more globally with more people, but uh, we also believe that it will definitely be in a, in a hybrid world. So we we hope and we we, we hope we can 
sooner, hope, hopefully sooner, uh, meet people again, having these platforms to, to talk really in, 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 in a physical way to, to, to colleagues, people, and also even to, to competitors, um, uh, to, to, to understand what's going on and to find better solutions. And this is something you can partly do virtual, but there's a the big part which you can't do virtual because it's, it's, it's human-centric. And, and, and therefore, again, it's, uh, it's, it's quite inter interesting times to, 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 to work in this digital format, but I think we all hope that a little bit of our old world is coming back. And I think, I think what one thing I was looking forward, which we now do virtually, if people would come to the Intergeo and you physically can see Israel and all that's next to each other, yeah. and it's, then you can also see the physical connection and it's people who are connected, who who like each other, who like to work, which I think gives the confidence and the trust for everybody to go on this journey is a good idea and nobody needs to worry.